basics like there is giving giving is a good thing and it should be practiced there is sacrifice there is uh it's good to help somebody in need even if you don't know that person and there is offering which is it's useful and good to show your respect to somebody who is trying to do good and you respect that person for that and then there is the last one which we got uh, which we have covered talked about mostly from the last uh, few sessions i think about um, uh, two months now <laughs> They are fruits and results of good and bad actions. And good and bad, as you remember, in Buddhism it specifically means that it, whether it helps us to clear the mind from negative emotions and unrealistic perceptions, or help us to, uh, or actually doesn't help us at all to, to, to give us more of those. Uh, that is actually what we call a bad action in Buddhism. If it's unwholesome, if it's a bad action, it actually helps us to increase greed, hatred, and delusion. So that's how we look in Buddhism at life. Uh, of course, there are some decisions which do not directly have to do with greed, hatred, and delusion. Sometimes we have to make decisions about many people. Then you can always say, well, we try to do what makes ourselves and other people the, best, the most happiest. But in generally, both Buddhist ethics is based on the way the mind works. So these are the principles in life to lead one's life happily. And we actually uh, talked a lot about uh, law of karma. And uh, last time we, the last times we talked about that everything we do, we say, and we think, they are called karma. And the result of that is called the ripening of karma. It doesn't only ripen in the here and now, it carries over in the next life and it even carries over in subsequent lives. You know, I've been thinking uh, to actually talk about a subject which uh, is very typical for this period of time, which is the Christmas Carol from, uh, I think it's from uh, 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 Dickens, right? Yeah. Did, everyone, did anyone ever, ever read that? Yes. I don't remember it. <laughs> no, there's a story very, there's actually yeah. several stories in Buddhism which are very, very similar. So similar that it, you almost have the feeling that somebody borrowed something. Yeah. I don't know if Charles Dickens was familiar with Buddhism, but it could have been because in those days it was, Buddhism was, wide, was widely uh, read at those days. So, um, there's actually a story in Buddhism about somebody who um, uh, he, was a, he was a king and he told his barber who cut him every, every uh, twice a month or something like that. And he told him, if you see the first gray hair on my head, you should tell me and I will become a monk. Uh, you know, I have many gray hairs already, but I'm, I'm fine because I'm already a monk. <laughs> so, so, so that king, um, he then, uh, he, that barber was okay with that. And then he, he actually told him once his first gray hair was on his head and he told him now the time has come. And then he decided to, to become a monk. And every time this happened, to the next generation of kings, it always went like this. They, each time the tradition was continued. At a certain time, there was one king, he was called King Nimi. Uh, in Thai language, we call him uh, Nemirat. And um, he was actually, uh, after he uh, became a monk, he was actually shown by some uh, deva, some higher heavenly being in this story he showed him to see all the different places uh, which one could be reborn into, which uh, were, they were places of happiness and places of suffering, which is very similar to the ghost, what is it called again? The ghost of uh, yesterday or something? The ghost of today? Yeah. The ghost of the past, right? Who shows, uh, who shows uh, Mr. Scrooge about the, the different types of suffering which occur because of being greedy. The other day I saw um, uh, an, a news scoop, or what do you call it in English, a news report about the, 
about that, that most of those observations about Mr. S uh, Scrooge were actually not just, uh, you know, not just the depiction of a fictional character, but actually were beliefs in those days. So people actually believed in those days that poor people should suffer a lot because then the population wouldn't grow too much. <laughs> so the beliefs of, that he expressed, which we would call cynicism these days, are the opposite of right view. And the beliefs that later on Scrooge learned, Ebenezer Scrooge learned to, to look at life more positively and with a spirit of generosity are what we would call in Buddhism right view. And there are actually many stories which are very reminiscent of, uh, of Ebenezer Scrooge and the Christmas Carol. Uh, but uh, in Buddhism, these are told throughout the year. They are not just told uh, on Christmas. <laughs> so uh, uh, it's, it's very interesting if you are, you know, coming from a Buddhist background to read this novel because it's, it's, it's so similar, the ideas. Uh, but um, uh, um, generosity is, uh, is, is very important, but there are also other parts in terms of looking at a, having a positive outset on life. Now, I have to say that every time I talk about this, I, I know that I'm it's always, you are always at the risk of sounding like you're intolerant of other views or something like that. But this is not uh, uh, expressing uh, how people should think because the word right in this context, it is uh, in, in Pali language is Sama in, uh, I think in Sanskrit it's, is uh, Samda or something like that, uh, or Samkada or something like that, which means right but it means right in terms of that it's the best way to attain enlightenment, attain awakening, to become a wiser person in the future, in the present and the future. So it's not only right in the sense of I'm right and you're wrong. That's not actually the meaning. It's, it's, it's actually more the meaning which has to do with the training of the mind. That's why we use the same word, which is Sama in meditation when we meditate and we think of the state of clarity and enlightenment, which the word Samma Alahan represents. So having said that, it's also important to understand that we cannot choose to just, we cannot only, we cannot just choose to become a person of right view. This is actually an enti entire process. There are no articles of faith in Buddhism, which we either believe in or not. Faith is rather seen as a quality that you develop because of your practice rather than a personal choice. Okay, part of it is a choice. After all, Ebenezer Scrooge did make a choice, right? Uh, eventually, he made a choice to improve his life. <clears throat> so part of it is a choice, but it's also an insight into reality, which we know from the Christmas Carol. <laughs> Sorry about the cliches. Yes. Oh, I, so uh, yeah, in Sanskrit, right view uh, means um, samya means right, and dristi samya. means okay. samya, yeah, and then dristi means view. So right. the equivalent is samya dristi is the right. Sanskrit or it means the exact same thing. Yes, exactly. So in in, in the Sanskrit uh, Buddhist literature, they they use those those words. I was not exactly sure about the spelling, but that is correct. Yes, I, I think that is very correct. Um, so, so in Tibetan tradition, you will hear slightly different words or in uh, Chinese tradition, but th it comes from the same teaching. Anyway, to, to come back to the, to the idea of right view, it doesn't, it's, it's not, uh, it's about a that we develop. We gradually learn to grow into these understandings of life. So you could say that, uh, right view is also connected with the idea of faith and faith in Buddhism. And I have to go back to my presentation to make it a bit more interesting. I'm not sure which one. <laughs> we have been doing many things now. I think the thing is we kind of jump around from different slides. That's probably why you get confused with which one might be. Right. But we learn so much every time. Yeah. So. I know we don't always okay. go in order. So faith in Buddhism is the confidence that your actions will always have consequences. Every deed is important. So some one uh, American uh, uh, insight 
teacher or one American Buddhist teacher, he actually, uh, for, she, she actually said that uh, if you want to summarize the law of karma in one sentence, it's you cannot get away with anything. <laughs> so that is the very negative formulation, like you would say it to, uh, to somebody who thinks of doing something criminal. But it's actually also, you could say positively, that every deed we do is important. So faith is always partly um, uh, um, a belief and which is not based on observation, but also in Buddhism, it must always be partly based on observation. There is no blind faith in, in Buddhism and faith is always taught hand in hand with wisdom. So every Buddhist teaching as was already observed by uh, some of the first generation of uh, scholars in Buddhism, every Buddhist teaching that starts with faith will end in wisdom. So, or every, any Buddhist teaching that has the concept of faith in it will also have the concept of wisdom. Faith and wisdom will never be, it will never just be faith. So uh, that is important to know. So it's a first step onto the, the large, uh, like, like this little road which we are walking on, or this little bridge, or this little pier, whatever it is, we are walking on and eventually we come to our destination, which is wisdom.